Our guest today is Matthew Teitelbaum. He is a director of MFA Boston, has a fantastic collection of art from all over the world and especially from India and South Asia. We are going to talk to him about MFA, his vision for 2020 and also technology, how technology is having an impact on the museums at MFA and around the world. Matthew, welcome to our Thank show. Thank you so much. And really appreciate your time. It's a fabulous place to, to be here. And uh, we really appreciate you giving so much time to us today. It's a pleasure. So, what I want to ask you first is that I think in 2020, MFA will celebrate 150 years. So, if you can give us a brief snapshot about last 150 years and the next 150 years. Well, I think you're absolutely right in the way you're phrasing it because any celebration of 150 years of true impact in our community, nationally and internationally, has to both celebrate the past but also anticipate the future. So exactly that, we have to think about how do we pause and acknowledge what we've done but also create the platform for what we want to think about in the future. So there's no doubt that in the 150 years since its founding, the Museum of Fine Arts Boston has become one of the great museums of the world. It's done so by putting together an extraordinary collection with the generosity of many, many people, and as you've graciously noted, across many areas. And so it is a very encyclopedic uh, collection, meaning say it represents cultures from around the world and across time. Mm -hmm. It's also had extraordinary impact uh, in its community and beyond through the ways in which it's involved many people in its work of various sorts. So it's been an impactful institution, it's been a meaningful institution, and uh, it has really, truly led uh, the country and the field in so many areas. Uh, as I think about the future, uh, and where do I think we can be after 2020, well, it's all a continuum, which is, what do I think museums have to be today? So we could overgeneralize for the last 150 years, but let's simply say that we put together a great collection, we've shared it by creating knowledge and creating platforms for sharing that knowledge. But I think the future of the MFA has to be to be more assertive, more sustained, more disciplined, about including more and more people in the work that we do. So a big word for us is partnership, collaboration. How do we create meaning and open up our institutions so that other people can create meaning with us? And uh, you know, it's interesting in, to me, yeah. <laughs> you know, that in our plan and in the way we talk about the MFA, we talk about taking risks. Well, what do we mean when we say taking risks? And that's how I sort of think about the future. One of the things that museums have, have done very well is created themselves as authorities. They've stood for a certain kind of academic rigor. They've created a certain kind of scholarship and platform for sharing that uh, scholarship. But what I think we have to do in the future is to create a space for more voices to be heard, for more people to be engaged in what I call the active interpretation. And there is a risk in that. The biggest risk we have, other than financial risks and whether or not we can ensure that we have the right kinds of income, another issue. Uh, but our biggest risk is can we be both an institution of authority and discipline within the academic work we do, but also be an institution that's open to the voices of others. And getting that balance right is a big risk. Because if you don't do it well, you find that they are in conflict, sure. right? And so think about what it means to ask a curator to give up some of their platform to allow other voices to interpret the works in the collection. Well, the risk is that the curators are gonna feel uncomfortable and they're gonna feel diminished. So how do I do that? How do we do that as an institution so that people feel uh, that this enhances what we do? Now, uh, earlier you mentioned uh, uh, participation and collaboration, and uh, in that context, uh, MFA has one of the fantastic ancient collections from India and South yeah. Asia. So, 
if you can talk a little about that and also the Indian American and South Asian community, how they can collaborate with the MFA. And what is your message to them? So I would say that the MFA, separate from how we need to collaborate and work in partnership within our communities, uh, has done an okay job, has taken on in an appropriate way to some degree the caring for the custodianship of our South Asian collection. Not a great job, mm -hmm. I have to say that. We have one of the great collections in the world. Uh, Kamar Swami was a visionary. He has had an impact here and around the world sure. with the work that he's done. I personally feel he needs more of a presence here. We have to be reminded of our past. Uh, more of the work that he collected should be on view. I'm not being controversial in sure. saying this. I suspect many of your viewers, many of your listeners would agree, and certainly our curators agree. Sure. The question is, how do you do that? Because once you start making a commitment to showing more of the work, then you can start saying what I believe you have to do. Who in the community, thinkers, artists, critics, uh, people who are engaged with the meaning of those objects, who in the community can help us interpret them and create links back into the community by how we create the platform by which we show these works. The sharing of the works is not just a matter of the authority of the museum. The sharing of the works is also activating a community through sure, those works. Absolutely. And I think that we need to be even more adventurous in how we think about that because a museum is only as good as its community. Sure. Right? In other words, you can't have a great, great museum in a place that's de detached from its community. You can't. You need the energy and the thinking and the advocacy within the community in order to create the great energy around I mean, the institution. I, I visited this museum many, many years ago and I looked at the South Asian collection and some of this, the things I saw, collections I saw, literally I'm not kidding, it really brought tears to my eyes. Because those things, you know, and, and this school children were reading about them, oh, this happened, that happened. And then coming and actually looking at that history, that, oh, this is what, what we are. Uh, You're a popular guy. Uh, yeah, sorry, actually, I'm going to turn it down. When you come home, remember to pick up milk at the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. You know, I always tell everybody, my guest, please turn your cell phone off, and today, you know, I guess we can do that, so. Yeah, uh, so the objects brought tears to your eyes. So, so literally brought tears to my eyes, because we had read about these things, we had heard about these things. And I said, oh my God, I'm standing here, and I'm just looking at them. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, if, that, you know, the South Asian Indian community, at least I, I saw that part, and which is amazing, and I think, uh, the MFA is doing a fantastic job, at least trying to connect with the yes, in, in yes. community, like we're having Diwali festival coming up, yeah. and you have also involved some people from the Indian American community, Monica Chandra, who yeah. really thanks to her that this interview happened today. And um, so Diwali and you have some uh, other um, events to uh, yeah. do from. So tell us a little bit about South Asian part. So, um, you know, one of the challenges for museums is, are they open enough? Mm -hmm. Are they welcoming enough? Do they say, you belong here? And, uh, you know, I don't think that we can ever stand still. We can never say we've done enough, but I'm pleased to hear you say that you, and acknowledge that we have done a number of things, and uh, many of them have had real impact, because we've created through the Diwali uh, Festival and other things that we've done I hope, a sense of invitation, a warm welcome, a sense that there is content here and experiences here we want you to share with each other, but do it through the agency of the art in this institution and the institution itself. And I think we are doing that. I think we're doing that in a way that uh, reminds communities of their heritage, of their legacy. Uh, and our, one of our responsibilities is to care for that. So I think that beyond uh, debate, really, is that the MFA takes care of its collections at a very high level. We have that as a responsibility, the custodial responsibility. We also have an interpretive 
responsibility? How do we interpret things? Because if we get the interpretation right for generations, across generations, for young people, people who have been here for many years, people who are just new to here, if we can find a way to interpret the work and involve uh, individuals in the community in that interpretation, then we will even further create that invitation. I believe that strongly, that the invitation has to exist by people seeing their voices represented in their museum. And so if you said to me, how do I see 2020 building on the base of Diwali and other things, it is precisely by getting the community more involved in helping us organize events, organize connections to artists. You know, there are access programs for schools that we have for new immigrants to the state of Massachusetts, for uh, different groups in the Boys and Girls Club, different groups in the community who have access to our institution. We're always looking for support to increase the accessibility. Uh, so I would hope that that would be a possibility in the Asian community, is that we would have advocates for us who would make the, help us make the institution even more accessible than it's been. Definitely. Now, uh, how the technology is playing a role when it comes to museums? And what am I doing in that regard? So one of the challenges with technology and museums is, uh, in one sense, exactly they're in the center of the life of the museum because the life of the museum is always thinking about the future. That's what art is, anticipating what will come next. In another sense, we're just not entrepreneurial in the way that technology entrepreneurs are uh, entrepreneurial. So we're not thinking as quickly as some of our partners might want us to. So we have this great contradiction that Technology is at the heart of the spirit of a museum. And on the other hand, the museum isn't set up to respond. And we're absolutely in that moment where we have big ideas and the processes of incubating them and introducing them are going more slowly than we'd like. The technology side of how technology and systems and different ways of thinking help us do our work on a day-to-day -day basis, what I call the inside role of technology, we're doing very well. We have lots of new point of sale systems, we have lots of HR, we're doing things with technology that internally are helping us a lot. But I think what your question is, is when a visitor comes to the MFA, how are we using technology to deepen their connection Absolutely. with yes. the works of art? And even if they're not visiting the museum. Right, and yeah. even if they're not. Yes. So, Conceptually, the one thing that I'm always trying to find the balance, I'm trying to find the balance between technology and different interpretive strategies that help you understand the art better and the act of looking at art. And I have the biggest challenge with technology when it gets in the way of looking at art. So if I go to a museum and I see something that enhances the ability to look at a work of art or encourages a deeper looking at the work of art, uh, then I'm certainly engaged. When I see technology that becomes in itself the thing and doesn't take you back to the work of art, I express some skepticism. One thing conceptually that we're very interested in is technology that can bring people together in dialogue with each other while in the museum space or in anticipation of coming to the museum. I'm interested in how technology creates community. So uh, it's great for delivering information. It's great for creating cross-disciplinary experiences. You can bring information into the museum space differently than ever before. Um, but I'm interested in, and we're doing some thinking around this, how technology can create sharing, shared knowledge, a sense of being together in an experience and that's where a lot of our attention is, which is, you'll see a lot of our activity. And in that meetings. context, also, the, you know, the MFA, given the collections which you have here, you know, there's a complete worldwide reach for, 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 the, for the audience. For, yeah. for, for, the, for, the, for the audience. We have not invested, uh, as some of our colleagues have, in creating those distance learning platforms or that notion of uh, serving the at a distance visitor. Uh, I'm not saying we're indifferent to it. We do a lot in social media. We do 
a lot of work posting our collection online. Um, we have not been as adventurous as others in creating platforms out there. And, uh, that said, I'm a big believer that the biggest challenge, the biggest challenge for museums today is to take care of their home base and to create that museum as a physical sure. space that is truly a space of convening. So what I mean by that is we need museums as places where people gather, where people share ideas, where they sh ex ex share thinking about issues of the day. Technology can help us do that. Technology can create, help create the invitation. Technology can become the platform for those different voices. And we're doing a lot of architecture that is both sharing the expertise of our staff but also inviting other voices in and creating those experiences that can be shared in the gallery space. And I think by 2020, 150th anniversary, sure. we will introduce some of that into our galleries. Yeah. Now, um, again, you know, most of our audience is uh, Indian and South Asian audience. Uh, what uh, you, uh, how they can help America? Well, I think the reality is that many uh, communities in Boston don't yet see the museum as a place where their history and their sense of identity can truly be activated, that they truly can belong to them. So there are a number of things. Visit more often. Be advocates for the museum in your family and social context suggest that you might bring your grandmother or your grandmother might bring the grandchild suggest that there are experiences to have here try us out see whether or not there are ways in which we involve you when you're here that might be different than your the idea of the old museum sure. uh, at some point uh, and people have been in in the indian community have been very generous to diwali and other celebrations we need more support to create more accessibility, to create the learning opportunities for children, for creating that sharing of objects, uh, either in the institution or outside. So there is a certain kind of financial support that we're always looking for to help us serve communities better and create greater accessibility to our institution. And I would stress that, that what we're looking for is to create a more, um, a bolder way of creating the invitation to the institution. I feel strongly about that today because I think that museums are really important. And I think that museums are places both of memory of the past, absolutely important, but also as places where you can talk about issues of the day, whether it's citizenship, civility, creation of community. Those things which are so important to all of us are things that which can be spoken of and realized in the museum space. I'm interested in doing that, and, I'm, and, I, and I look for leaders in the community who want to help us do that. Financial support, as I say, advocacy. And I think that um, your experience coming here, where you had that emotional response to seeing Absolutely. things here, is, you know, two things happened. I'm, I'm guessing, two things happened to you. You had a moment of thinking about your past and the traditions of your community. And at the same time, you thought it was extraordinary that it was in the present with you. That Absolutely. That it was Absolutely. right there with you. Absolutely. And finding a way to combine those two things so that leaders and broad uh, participation from the Indian community can feel they belong here and that their past is being respected on one hand, but then opened up for new generations on another, that would be very exciting to do. So how do we increase the, how do we increase the platform? How do we increase people thinking in this way? And by the way, you coming to see and share your thoughts with me today is exactly that. You're, you're doing what I would hope sure. and I appreciate very much. Sure. Thank creating you. a way for people to understand that this is a place for them. Excellent. Well, thank you very much uh, for your time. I really appreciate Pleasure. it.